this. I thought it was mostly just me myself going through this. Like nobody else could connect with me. Nobody else could relate to me. And I thought it was just like, I was the only person in the world going through what I was going through. I was blinded as to how important it is for us to recognize this problem until I worked at this institution. Um, I'd say out of the 30 students that I deal with, five of them have been suicidal. One of the things that we know about suicide is that it's not about death. It doesn't really make any difference how old somebody is. It's about wanting to end the pain or the situation, the hopelessness, the helplessness that they find themselves in. And so for a teenager or you know somebody maybe even as young as 10 years old, um, the fact that we never talk about mental health and um, you know acknowledge you know that kids um, you know can have some of their first symptoms you know when they're in elementary school um, middle school high school um, going off to college you know somebody like that could feel very isolated and and not know what's going on well so. when we encounter a student that is suicidal we understand that what they need most is just a reason for being and a reason why they're here and uh, you know just help them understand what their goals are and what they want to achieve in life and really just help them find a, a way to do that and an outlet to do that. What we do is even though it's a suicide prevention program our ultimate goal is to get kids whatever help they need. Um, whether, well not kids, I mean uh, young adults, whoever. Are, we remind people that it's okay to ask for help. At the time that I was going through all of that, um, I didn't try to get help from anybody. I didn't think that, well obviously I thought no one cared, so what was the point of trying to get help? Back then, when I was going through what I was going through, suicide was mostly thought of as a solution or a path that I would, an easier path to take than actually trying to go through what I was going through. And then there's two ways to look at it. There's, you could call them warning signs, which are things that a friend would see in, in their friend, or there's symptoms, which are things that a person would feel. If a person is feeling hopelessness, then that would be a symptom of suicide. Um, or of depression. A warning sign of that hopelessness would be some, something that a friend would observe would be maybe that person's withdrawing, maybe they're, um, they're getting really stressed out, maybe they're becoming, um, they're eating or their sleeping patterns or changes, things like that. But really overt warning signs or red flags would be making verbal statements about suicide. A lot of times people who are thinking about suicide will say something to, to a friend, say something maybe oh, well, I'm not going to be around anyways, or what's the point in going on, or talk about death. But also what we tell people is to trust their instincts, is that, you know, if you think something's wrong with your friend, if you're worried about them, don't be afraid to have the conversation, to sit down and have an honest talk with them, and let them know that if something is wrong, that you're there to help. If anyone is expressing hopelessness, uncontrolled anger, or anxiety, seek help. Those who may be in a suicidal position or affected by a mental disease might also exhibit dramatic mood changes, alcohol or drug abuse, insecurity, and feelings of being trapped and alone. Talking about your problems is the first step to getting help. So, you know, that's really what we're advocating is that people talk to each other. Um, my support system was mostly just talking to family people finding out what I was trying to do and what I was going through and people just having that kind of talk with you that makes you realize like like a reality check on why you shouldn't go through that like that people are actually there to help you and people care. Um, too often people are so worried about saying the wrong thing to someone who may be suicidal that they don't say anything at all which is the worst thing that you can do. Once you realize how empowering it can be and how easy it is to save a life with information, um, that's when people start learning about it. I think in the long run, trying to get help from people and understanding them 
and how they felt about me trying to commit suicide would have helped me psychologically and emotionally. It's very important for people confronted by suicidal um, classmates or just suicidal friends or acquaintances you need to make sure that that person is being fed the way that they need to be fed so they do feel like they're worth something. So the front of the card basically gives them the words to ask for help because a lot of times when people are out of situation whether it's because they have suicide ideation or whether they're just having a tough time and they need some help it's often tough to start that conversation or to let people know that you need help. So that's what the front of the card does is it gives them the words to ask for help. Then when you look on the back of the card, it gives the, the recipient of the card directions on what to do if they receive the card. The card uses serves as a lot of purposes. You know, for one, it gives them the words. But um, also the biggest tool, I think, is that it reconnects the kids to each other and to the school, that it reminds them that they're not alone in the struggle, that there's other people out there who are stressed out, there's other people out there that are willing to help. What are some other things that you could do, like, you know, eat healthy, uh, get enough sleep, um, exercise, uh, find a passion, you know, enjoy, enjoy yourself, because this is the time, this is the time of discovering who you are, and, and that should be okay. Now, I'm more open to people's suggestions and people's thoughts towards me and my own life instead of being closed in the closet just thinking that no one cared and there's no one else out there that will understand. How does being open kind of help you now? It makes things a lot easier. With the suicide rate increasing that means that we should only be trying harder to be ministers to everybody you know just just spreading the love and the, the goodwill and never giving up because there just is no room for that right now. There are a number of resources out there. Numbers to someone who will listen and help, organizations that can provide you with more information about suicide, and groups willing to take the time and effort to make sure you and others are aware. Reaching out is sometimes the hardest step to take.